Hello and welcome to another episode of the Chew Strong Podcast. Eddie and I are so excited to start this podcast with saying Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. That's, that's exactly what was on my mind when you said that. <laughs> Even though we are two days post-Christmas, post, yeah. uh, there is, at the time of this recording, there's four days left in 2023. So I'm really excited that we have made it through another year and we've had a whole year of podcasting. We've seen the community grow. Um, so I guess speaking of community, welcome our listeners, Ed. How are our listeners, you know, tuning in today? How are they tuning in? Well, <laughs> I'm sure a lot of them are probably running. Yeah. So big shout out to you guys out there putting those miles in and we got some people in the gym right now. I'm mm-hmm. sure of it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's people in their basement. Oh, yes. Like the people that actually have snow on the ground. Yes. And it's negative 18. Yes. And they're putting their work in, mm-hmm. getting after it right now. Well done. Mm-hmm. And who else we got? I don't know. Some people might be laying on the couch because, hello, this is vacation True. time from Christmas to New Year's Eve. Yeah, vegging A out. lot of people have this time to rest and relax. And I don't know about... No judgment. I know people can't see this. But you and I are definitely business up top and party on the bottom. We're still wearing our flannel pajamas. I got pajamas <laughs> so and I got I. Uh, my my slippers on. It's a good I have day. on Christmas pajamas, but up top, not Christmas pajamas. No, yeah. <laughs> I thought I better change my top for this. Uh, <laughs> this is taking us back to 2020 when everyone had to get on a Zoom. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. I'll put on a decent shirt. That's about it. Yeah, so we got some people lounging on the couch. Who, mm-hmm. What else? Who else we got out there? We got kids. I always like to yes. give a shout out to the kiddos that have started listening to this. Um, yeah, kids are awesome. Yeah. We love having... Love the kids. Love the yeah. kiddos. Um, and we got... Well, we've knocked... Uh, Harley riders, obviously, because we found <laughs> that out earlier in the year. <laughs> people just driving in the car. Driving I mean, some people car. are actually listening to this while they're taking a road trip. Mm-hmm. And they're like, this is going to be the best hour or two hours yeah. of the trip because we get Eddie and Sally, your friends, mm. that are just joining you right now. That so. or they're driving back from family that they've spent Christmas with. And they're mm-hmm. like, let's go. Let's just get on the road. We need to get out of here. <laughs> let's just go. We just need to tune into the Chew Strong podcast. To we need to decompress. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Family is family, and uh, you know we all have our highs and lows with family. But but what we do know to be true is that you know your family is 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 forever, regardless of the drama. Yeah. And uh, the tough seasons. Mm-hmm. You know we all understand <laughs> on various levels. But I love also that we can create we can create our own family through communities and and friendships. And sometimes our friendships end up being closer than our family relationship. So, Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know from picking up mail multiple times, um, this month, we got a, a big increase in written letters and cards, um, this season. And first I want to say thank you so much to everyone that wrote a card, Mm -hmm. sent a Christmas card. That was really cool. But we we learned a lot about our community from the stories and the things that people shared with us. And yesterday, for whatever reason, I think I cried reading almost every single card that I opened. Yeah. And I even said to you, like, why am I so emotional? I don't even know. But I think it's just been a long year. We we've been really busy this year, and I think it's so easy to get caught up in the work, 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 or just the doing that. You know, we we can overlook reflecting and really thinking about what it is that we're working toward and mm-hmm. the impact that we're making or if we're making an impact at all. And yesterday was just the sweetest, you know, that, that time that I sat on the couch and read all those um, cards and letters, it was just such a sweet time to reflect and really understand this community that we have built and that we just love. So um, there were a few people, and sorry, listeners, if you hear our dog in the back, he's uh, he's a joining us for the podcast today. But there were a few people that just really wanted to make it a point to say that 
you know, I, I think one person in particular said, you know, I live alone and sometimes I'll turn on your podcasts mm-hmm. and your voices and laughter fill my home. And I really appreciate that. I don't know why that started making me cry. Um, and then just other people that said, you know, the podcast has helped them through a dark time because they turn it on and they feel like they're sitting at, at the table with us. They're sitting with their friends and they're able to think about life and from a different perspective, a stronger perspective and encouraging, motivating message is, is found in, in each episode that's that's really helped them through some tough times. So yeah. pretty powerful stuff. I mean, I knew it was powerful when we went yesterday to go to the mail and get the mail. And as we were leaving the parking lot, uh, I swung through Chick-fil-A <laughs> to get a, a quick meal, <laughs> some hot fries. <laughs> and uh, you started to uh, open up the mail and start to read it. And then uh, after I ordered, we're waiting in there. And all of a sudden, you're, you're stop, you stopped reading. You're, you're crying. And, <laughs> you know, you're sharing a few of, of the letters with me and what they said. And then uh, you stopped reading because you just couldn't get through. You couldn't get through one without crying. And uh, so you, pa- you literally stopped. We had some Chick-fil-A. And then we came home. <laughs> and later... That afternoon, you picked up that pile again and started working your way through it on the couch. And uh, same thing, you know, just like you said, just some just some impacting stories, and just it's just neat to for me, I guess, to watch you know all the the hard work that you put into the podcast and your post, your book, uh, everything you've you've been doing, um, and how many people you've been impacting, and and like you said, just the people that you've you've reached the people that have shared just so many you know incredible stories of um from you know being lonely to you know to getting a pr or whatever on on a race um just this huge spectrum of of people that you've been able to to touch and um it's pretty cool pretty cool to to read some of those and um those of you out there that sent in a letter thank you because we did read through all of them and, and very, um, you're very thoughtful. And so we're, we're grateful for you. And, um, yeah, thank you. And to everyone that sent chocolates, coffee, uh, we, we got some really cool gifts, um, pictures and handmade gifts. It was, it was super cool. So thank you very much. I actually wanted to share this story with you because, um, it's a pretty vulnerable story, but I, I know that, in this season, I think people can relate. I think for those of you that are looking towards 2024 and, you know, I know not everyone is into New Year's resolutions, which you don't have to be, but I, I love the idea that it's a new year. And so every day we get a new day. Mm-hmm. Every day is a new a new chance for us to try again, to work towards something. You know, we can't change what happened yesterday. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. We get a new day. And so, yeah, the new year marks a new year. We're hopeful of, of what's to come. Many of us are are hoping that we can maybe change a bad habit that we have. Maybe we're hoping that we can achieve something that we failed at achieving this year. And so we're going to try again. You know, maybe 2024 marks a new relationship, uh, a new move, a new transition in life. And I think that for the most part, people do love new things and they love opportunities to try again. And I I think that's what's so beautiful about every life is that when you open up your eyes in the morning, that's the first um, confirmation that you have been given a gift Mm -hmm. and you get to try again. You get to set a goal for that day. And this idea of needing to start on Monday or start on January 1st or start at a new month, the the truth is you get to start every day and you get to choose when, you know, the parameters in which you set a goal. Um, and that's what's so exciting about your life is it's it's the story that you want to tell and how it plays out. I, I wanted to share this story because I think this is partly why maybe I was reading every single letter and was getting really emotional. Um, the holidays can sometimes be hard for me. I go back and forth. And I, I know a lot of people um, identify with this too. And Eddie and I both have lost people um, 
over the holidays. And so sometimes when the holidays come around, because we all make such a big deal about them, we think about the people that aren't there to join in the celebrating and and to join in um, on the traditions that maybe those people that we loved used to be a part of. And so as much as there's a lot of joy and hope and laughter and coming together during the holidays, there's also a lot of remembrance of, of loss and what, what what once was. Um, and maybe sometimes those things are, are blaring in such a way that it feels like all that's highlighted is what we don't have. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I've am i always been aware of that in myself. And, um, you know, I like to take the time to, to go on walks. I like to take the time to journal and just think about that because for as much as lost, for as much as things don't go our way, there's always something to be grateful for. There's always... Um, a light and a hope that we can look forward to, and truly, that is the the seasons in life. You know, we don't we don't stay in those seasons forever, and even when it comes to life, we're all guaranteed that one day our life will pass and and end. And so, um, I feel like the end of a of a year is one of the best times to reflect on everything that we have been given. And the opportunities that we've been given, and even if it's a, a hard time, a, a hard season, knowing that this is very much a part of life and it's propelling us to something better ahead if we we keep that hope alive. So I was thinking about how this year we did a lot. And I know, Eddie, you and I kind of want to talk about a little bit of a recap of this year. It was a, a, a full year. Um, of achieving a lot of things that I have dreamed of, but it did not come without a lack of um, insecurity and confidence at times and um, even intimidation. And I think it's so important to share that with people because as, for as much as we, you know, we put out, whether it's content and documentaries and achieving these races, you know, none of those things are smooth sailing. And we, just like you, have you know, relationships that that hit rough spots sometimes. And, and we have difficult conversations throughout the year with, with people that we care about um, and just hard seasons. I, I think for the most part, Eddie and I have tried to do our best in, in sharing, you know, the real, the real life. And I think we can relate to, you know, a lot of our listeners in this. And one of them was releasing my book. And I put in the beginning of my book – that it took me almost 20 years to write. One of the reasons why it took me such a long time was because of fear. Fear of what people would say, how people would react. Most importantly, I was really feel fearful of even people that were close to me of, of rejecting me. And sharing the the stories that I did, sharing genuinely what is is true of my story as a way to encourage other people. You know, my hope when I when I finished writing that book, well, I should say my hope as I came to the closing chapters of those book was to really drive home a message of forgiveness, hope, strength, and choosing to move forward. And if you haven't read my book, um, it's about the first 18 years of my life. And what I realized was for so many years, I didn't finish that book because I was so afraid of the critics and the opinions of others, opinions of others that, that you know, are in um, a closer circle than, let's just say, you know, random people online. And what I realized was the very people that I thought would judge me and reject me the most did. And that was really painful for me. It was, it was painful because in my mind, I thought, man, if, if you read this, you, you would understand that you'd understand my heart and that you would see the good that came out of it. Because the truth is, is it, it, it has impacted people all over the world. Mm-hmm. And every single day, we get messages from people who say, wow, I feel like I can have a hard conversation with someone that hurt me. Mm-hmm. I feel like... I can start stepping towards forgiveness. I feel like I can grow from this. I can make stronger choices. And this is helping me deal with some of the hurt from my past. And 
the more that I have reflected on it, the more I realize that so often in life, we are paralyzed by fear and rejection. And we may might not do something or set a new goal or try something because we care so much about what other people think. And what I learned was the people who really know me, who genuinely love me and support me, do that no matter what. And that is really what love is. Love isn't do what I say and act the way I expect you to, and then I'll love you. Mm-hmm. And anytime you step out of line, I'm shunning you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ignore you. I'm not going to talk to you. I mean, the the people that I expected to reject me didn't even say anything. It was just, it was like within weeks of the of the book releasing, suddenly they stopped talking to me. And I realized, I think I was telling you, my text messages and direct messages to these people suddenly were all one-sided. Mm. And I went back and I was like, wow, there's like 10 or 15 re- like messages they didn't respond to. It's just all me checking in and saying things and hello. And, um, and so yesterday, getting those letters, so many heartfelt letters of people saying thank you. Mm. Thank you for sharing your life. Thank you for being so vulnerable. Thank you for helping me through a hard time because of your book and your podcast. This has impacted my life. And I I think I just needed to hear that. Mm-hmm. I needed to hear and, and remember that that is real life. You are never going to please everyone 100% of the time. It's impossible. Right. And if that is your motivation in doing things is to please the masses. I mean, we call it people pleasing. Mm -hmm. You will always be miserable Mm -hmm. because you're not going to be living in an authentic way. You're just going to be living in a scared, worried, anxious way, making sure that you have dotted all your I's, crossed all your T's, and made sure that no boat has been rocked. And the truth is, living a real authentic life, you're going to rock a lot of boats. And you might upset people. But I really believe that that is what true love is. See, true love is is telling the truth. And and true love it endures all things, it perseveres all things. It's it's unconditionally loving at all times. Mm-hmm. Which that's super hard to find. I mean, I know I'm not perfect at that myself. <laughs> but I've learned a lot over the years. And this just doesn't just stop at the book. I mean, I've always been surprised you know, it's in things that I've accomplished in my life. And as we grow in all areas, you understand that sometimes people just don't like you because you're growing. They don't like you because you're getting attention because you're successful. You make them feel uncomfortable. And sometimes we do things that other people wish so badly they could do and they see you doing it and you're brave and and in that courage you achieve it and they just can't handle being around you because to them you're a reminder of their failure Hmm. you're a reminder of their fear you're a reminder of what they don't have and that is so real for a lot of people i mean i can't you know express the number because I've been in this for a long time and it pretty much happened when I first got signed as a professional athlete back in 2014 how many people reached out to me and said you know my spouse doesn't like me running my spouse doesn't like me going after these ultras my mom thinks I'm crazy my family who I love like really they really question me they make me feel bad so this is like talking about people that that actually do really love you Mm -hmm that that see you day in and day out and they still don't support you. That's hard. That's really hard. And I know you and I had touched on that in an earlier podcast. And one of the things that that we talked about was I know when I first started doing ultras, it was confusing for you. Yeah. It was like if you're gonna run that far, like really? Like what what's going on? Like you were a soccer player your whole life. Like what what is this go run for three or four hours now? Mm-hmm. We have two little kids. Like And I think there needs to come, we have to come to a point of humility where we then say, okay, I'm going to, instead of being angry and walking away and being like, I can't believe you asked me those questions and you would question me and you would judge me. Just if you really love that person, it's worth having the hard conversation. Mm -hmm. It is worth 
going through the uncomfortable moments of asking the questions that are hard. See, most of us don't want to do that. We don't want to say, hey, what did you mean by that? Because that actually hurt my feelings. And sometimes we are acting selfishly. I know for me, I didn't always get it right in the beginning. I didn't think about the fact every single time, like, yeah, this might be hard for for Eddie after working 60 hours a week to go and hang out with two babies at McDonald's while I go and get a long run done when all he wants to do is like hang out as a family. And we had to figure that out, you know, and I I will never claim that I'm a perfect mom, a perfect wife. I, I don't have perfect balance in my life. But what I do know to be true is that throughout all those years, you and I kept on coming back together because we chose that. Yeah. And we, we chose to have the hard conversations. And I had to look at my mistakes and think, like, how can I make this better? And really, that's what I, you know, when we did that one YouTube, which I know has over 100,000 views on it, because a lot of people have really been encouraged by it. It's called 30 Miles and Answering Your Questions. You can check it out on the channel. Mm -hmm. One of the things I talked about was creating your own path and doing what works for you and your family. That's where 4 a.m. came from. (laughs) That's where training at 10 p.m. came from. That's where splitting up my long run into three different runs around sports and social activity. That's where all that came from. I carved out a way that worked for us. Mm -hmm. And that that might not be the way for everyone, but it was a way that kept us respectful of each other and putting, putting forth what was good and true and the most meaningful in life. See, at the end of the day, family is the most important thing. And that's what what lasts. That's what you want at the end of your life is is your family, yeah. not the medals. But did we figure that out in the beginning? No, we hurt each other's feelings a lot, mm-hmm. and we had, you know, seasons where we f- were disconnected. But I think that helping people understand that just because someone is successful, just because someone is achieving all the things, does not mean that it, there was a smooth path to get there. You are not alone in the tensions that you feel in your relationships. You are not alone in the, those those seasons where you feel like nobody understand you understands you and your goals. When you find people that support you in your goals, all your crazy dreams, hold on to them because they are gold. And for Eddie and I, that took time. It takes work. Relationships take work. And Going back to the people who I knew would completely reject me after releasing my book, when I look back on my history with those people, the most painful thing that I came to realize was, wow, they have rarely supported me. They have rarely cared about me. They have rarely ever made sacrifices for me to check in on me, to be, to really get to know who I am. You know, just because they've been around the inner circle for a while doesn't mean that they are the closest to me and deserve priority over what I know to be good and true in my life. And life, life is painful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and painful. And sometimes that's how it is all the way to the end of your life. I think that we would all be surprised to... If we really took the time to get to know people, whether it's people you follow online, people in your running group, people at your job, I think we would surprise ourselves at how much we have in common as it pertains to struggles and pain, you know, relationship issues, how much alike we actually are. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the driving motivations in writing that book was you are not alone. When I was a kid, I felt very alone. I felt very isolated even in, in my in my own family, very alone. And as I made my way to 17 and 18, probably some of the worst years of my entire life, where I really believed that the better path was just ending my life. And I think that to be able to write a book of 18 years of struggle, you know, for some of us, some of you listening, you are in a season of struggle. It's been a couple months and you're like, oh my gosh, how much longer is this going to last? For some of you, it's been a couple years. And I'm really grateful that I can look back now, not then I didn't, but I can look back now and realize all those 
events in my life were not in vain. They weren't for nothing. I do know that because I went through all that and I am where I am today, that I can use that for compassion, empathy, and understanding with people on so many different levels. And if I could get through what I went through, you can too. If I can get through a really tough, challenging season that lasted years and years and years and years where I felt completely alone and and it was like loss after loss and pain after pain, so can you. And as much as, you know, I think we try to tell our kids is, I wish that you had a smooth life where every person that you came into contact with loved you Mm. and treated you with respect and thought nothing but the best of you and for you and encouraged you in your dreams and wanted wanted to see you grow and brought out the best in you. But that's just not going to happen. So you're going to be in friendships where after a year or two, you realize this is a toxic friendship. This is not a good relationship. You're going to you're gonna have a, a, a partner, a, an, a romantic partner that might turn out to be a really bad situation that might break your heart, that that might even feel like it's destroying you and who you are. All of those things are are real everyday life situations that a lot of us have, have gone through. And I think the message that I continually want to spread is you are meant for so much more and there's so much more ahead of you. And you get to write that story. You get to step forward in a way that you want to. What's the story you want to tell? I, If I have any regret on my book, it's that I didn't release it earlier. Hmm. I let fear and anxiety and people-pleasing keep that book on the shelf. Hmm. Keep me from achieving something that I said I wanted to achieve when I was in elementary school. I have kept journals my entire life, boxes and boxes of journals. I've written my entire life. I love to write. And writing a book has always been one of the greatest dreams of mine. And it really felt like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. As far as a project goes, a a goal that I set for myself, not not saying goodbye to people that I love. I mean, that's that's the hardest thing that we do in life, right? So... Whoever needed to hear that right now, listeners, young and old, I I want you to know that sometimes you're going to embark on a dream journey and even people that you love will be skeptical and they might criticize you. They might question you, but I encourage you to be gracious and kind and patient in that. Ask questions. See if you can come to a, a reckoning People that really love you will take the time to talk to you. I think that's what you and I talked about yesterday. Yeah. If someone just completely cuts you off and doesn't give any explanation as to why, as hard as it is to admit, you have to understand that you weren't worth the hard conversation. Mm. And man, Eddie and I had a really great conversation yesterday about that. And I, at one point you had to come over and put your arm around me because I was crying, realizing that Mm -hmm. here's someone I thought that loved me and I wasn't even worth a hard conversation. I wasn't even worth reaching out to. It was just, you're nothing to me. Mm. And I think that every purpose, every person on earth is full of purpose Mm -hmm. and value It's just that sometimes we let other people dictate our value. We allow other people to take up real estate in our mind and our heart when they never even deserve that in the first place. And you have to ask, like, why am I doing that? Why do I let this person have so much value in real estate in my life when I look back at the history and all they've done is hurt me? They did not show up when I was having a hard time. They weren't there for the important moments. They weren't there for any important moments in my life. All they've done is belittled me. And and all they've done is they've been kind to me when I do what they expected me to do, Mm. when I perform in a way that they expect me to, when I stay in line with their expectations. And then you realize that's not love. And I look across the table at you, Eddie, and I realize you and I have fallen out of line a lot. 
And we have had so many rough seasons. We've, we've been together since we were 19 years old. Mm. We've been best friends since we were 18. And, you know, that's definitely a common message we get. A lot of people say, I love you and Eddie's relationship. I love the banter and the friendship. And thank you for showing us what a strong relationship is. Listeners, we have not always had the smoothest path in our relationship, but we have always been committed to fighting for each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes Eddie fights a little bit more for me. In other seasons, I fight a little bit harder. And that's the choice that we make. Mm -hmm. Love is is a choice. Because we don't always feel it all the time. <laughs> no, nope. you're right. <laughs> we definitely don't always feel it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's uh, as the years go on and on, I just, the the strong feeling, if I were to say a feeling I do have, is just I, I can't imagine my life without you mm. and your friendship and everything that you are. I mean, you have proven again and again that even at my worst and ugliest seasons in my life that you're still there. It's weird because a lot of people keep saying that to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting that a lot. <laughs> Just every day I'm getting like messages about how amazing I am. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's uh, – thanks for sharing all that. It's pretty powerful, you know. I think what you said too where fear really – it's it's just sad, right? Like where fear is such a crippler of people's – goals because they don't for whatever reason right that whatever that fear looks like um they don't pursue that goal that job that person or whatever because of of fear but yet just like you said with your book it's once you got over that fear released it and it's just you can see how many people were affected and touched and impacted and i mean there's so many people out there i know that aren't pursuing those goals or those things because of fear, but yet there's, they're missing out on impacting so many people, you know, but yeah, it's pretty powerful. Taking the time to reflect on that as we head into 2024, you know, we want to encourage you, our listeners to allow yourself to consider what is it that is keeping you from stepping forth, I guess, maybe in, in bravery and courage mm -hmm. to do the things, to do the things that you've always wanted to do, but maybe you're not. Mm -hmm. I think that the other thing that we do is we downplay. So deep down, I really run, a, I, deep down, I really want to run a marathon, but I'm just going to stick to a 5k or 10k because that's, you know, that's not extreme. A marathon sounds extreme. And people will question that. And I don't believe I can go 26.2 miles. That's really far. So I'm just going to keep it, you know, low level. And, you know, that doesn't sound as, as, as extreme. And that might be a, a, a pretty loose example, but I, I think we can apply that across any goal. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we undershoot ourselves purposely because we feel like causing any type of commotion or disruption to our everyday comfort zone is too scary. Yeah. It's safe. There's no risk. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Eddie, what were some of the things this year that you felt like you did or you achieved or that you went through that was uncomfortable for you? Uncomfortable? Uh, <laughs> probably like five all-nighters. <laughs> well, five plus, really. Yeah, I've never multiple done that. You and... lost a lot of sleep this year. <laughs> yeah. I had no choice, but that was definitely uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what... Uh... Things I did that were uncomfortable this year? Is that uncomfortable or, or just like a big big leap for you? Big leap? Uh let's see. Um I I don't know. What I'm trying to think of something that's uh, a big leap. I guess I'm trying to steer you into what we were uh -oh. chatting about yesterday. Because I look at I look at what you've done just even in, yeah, and it's been definitely a journey for the past three years from uh -huh. the time we moved from Bend 
um, in 2021 back mm-hmm. to Huntington Beach, you left your job as an elementary school teacher. Yeah. And you took this huge leap of faith to do something that you've never done before. Yeah. You had no schooling in, you had no experience, you had no mentor, you just went and did it. Mm. And yesterday's conversation, I guess we kind of had like a reflection yeah, conversation yeah. yesterday because we knew we were going to talk a little bit about it on the podcast. But I thought, man, I feel like more people can relate to you than you think because there's definitely things that we think of in our mind that we're like, dude, I would want to do that, but I have no business doing it Mm -hmm. because I didn't go to school for that. I have never even tried that. I don't know anyone that knows how to do that. I have no, you know, I don't, I don't feel like that's something like I could achieve because I have no business being in that space. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. To your point, I feel that it's been more, not just this past year, but yeah, I guess, Three years now. Two years. Two years. <laughs> Two years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, leaving a very, uh, you know, not comfortable, but very like, what's the word I'm looking for? The the everyday, I, I have a job, right? Like that security of going to- A very secure job with yeah, benefits. With and benefits. And a paycheck that came on a day that was supposed to come on every time. Yeah. And the amount that you expected and- yeah, and that's that's very my that's my personality where mm, I love big time <laughs> like that structure the uh, yeah the consistency so to even think about like leaving something that I've done for so long and I liked it wasn't like I, I didn't like it and I you know enjoyed it and um, felt like I was pretty good at it but to to think about leaving that for something that. I've never done before and I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, was that was a big deal. But then to actually do it um, and to know that I, you know, I have a family, I have kids, I, you know, and to really take that jump uh, was was pretty scary. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, I'm stoked I did it, uh, you know, because I've learned a lot um, of new things and tried new things that I probably wouldn't have ever. Well, I'd love to to pause you on that because I don't think everyone knows what you're talking about when you say I tried new things and, you know, what, what, what were the things that you actually had to learn? What did you do? What was that path? Because our listeners for the most part can relate to this. This is why people don't pursue things. Mm -hmm. It is, if it's not in your original wheelhouse, if you didn't go to school for it, if you don't have experience in it, no one in your family does it, why are you doing it? Why do you think that you can achieve that? What what was that? Why did you think you could do what you did? Uh, because there's YouTube and I'm able to, <laughs> <laughs> to pretty much ah. research and find out anything uh, and how to do something on that. That yeah. was a big part of it, honestly. Like, you know, that books and... Uh, you know, courses, whatever, right? All that stuff that really um, gives you confidence to to try something. Well, I, I think we should like backpedal a little bit because this is towards the end of 2021. And I just asked you, I said, will you come take over my business and build new portals of the business that I don't know how to do? Things that I that I really want, that I've wanted for years. Like for years, I wanted a podcast mm-hmm. for a very long time. Yeah. I mean, almost almost 10 years, I wanted a podcast. Yeah. And I really wanted to create some type of way, some type of platform to get all of my coaching and fitness and strength workouts on a platform. Mm-hmm. And, and that was years of, of research trying to understand it. Some of those things, the investment was so massive. Yeah. And- we did not have the funds for that. So for me, I felt like these two things are impossible. I know sound and audio, and I'm looking around at the studio that you built. That's one of the things we're talking about here. You build a podcast studio. I mean, all those things were, it's like hieroglyphics to me. Mm. I have, I wouldn't even know where to start. And, you know, sometimes YouTube, YouTube videos just don't cut it for me. Like I'm a very hands-on person. And mm-hmm. so I think... I couldn't see myself ever doing an app or a podcast. Um, the on the other side of it was 
you being thrown into the business side. I mean, you talk to all the brands. You're the one negotiating all the contracts. You you didn't like you were an elementary school teacher, right? Right. <laughs> so you've had to talk to some very big companies mm-hmm. and have a lot of back and forth. You've you have really made everything better. So you so I asked you to do these things and I remember sitting on the couch in Biola at Biola. I remember sitting on the couch at Bend at our Bend house mm-hmm. and and you kind of shaking your head like I don't know if that's a good idea, Sally. Like we have stability with me as a teacher. We we have dental insurance and health insurance and we're guaranteed this paycheck like I'm providing for the family. Mhm. And you're asking me to walk away from that and take a chance on something I have no idea how to do. I I just admire that so much. Yeah, I do remember just, I mean, I think initially too, where you wanted me to help out, it was, you had a, a, ros- a small roster of um, people that you were coaching online mm-hmm. and you initially wanted me to kind of help out with that. Like, hey, you know, maybe you can help out with, you know, reaching out and asking questions or seeing how you can assist them and, and you can kind of focus on the the training part and seeing how we can go from there and that was kind of the initial mm-hmm. and initial thing there and I, that was where I was like I don't know if that's gonna cut it like that's not gonna be enough like why would I quit my job to do that like I don't see <laughs> I don't see the return on that I you know and I feel like you classic you you had you know 48 other things going on in your head that's going to branch from that <laughs> one coaching thing to, you know, all these other things. And I didn't see that. I just saw, you know, you you coaching a handful of people and that was supposed to, you know, be able to provide for all of us as, as we do this together. Um, but, but yeah, so I, I feel once I decided to to move over to help out, uh, you know, then – once you started talking about a podcast and an app and all these things, then it's like, all right, let's let's see what we can do, how to how to make this happen, and yeah, that's when like the research, go, you know, went on and and reading books or whatever to find out how the heck to do all this stuff <laughs> because I was completely clueless, and uh, you know, I remember, yeah, so yeah, that's just, I'm glad I did it, and it's been a it's been a fun journey so far, just learning so many new things and. Um, you know, but at first it was not an easy, an easy move. Mm -hmm. I remember when you first tried to build out some type of podcast, like backdrop, if, if listeners want to go on to our YouTube channel and see some of those initial episodes, we used your computer camera. Okay. So this this was (laughs) so stupid, but this is what we did. We, we got the these microphones and we I had them very very we were sitting at this small desk and we weren't looking at each other we were next to each other and we ha- I had the microphones uh, pretty close together so as you can imagine those things are like both you know bleeding over to each other and it was hard you know it was just a, an audio mess and then yeah we had the the laptop computer which is not the best quality. And then I thought it would be a good idea to build behind us like a backdrop of this like plywood looking thing from Home Depot uh, and kind of just put it behind us um, with this, you know, just this wood feel. And then I strung some lights on it um, and we sat really close to it because the room that we were in was really small. and, And that's obviously another audio nightmare because what we were saying was just bouncing directly off of that <laughs> wood back into the microphone and it was just an absolute absolute mess and <laughs> i don't know what lighting we were using we we're just using some overhead fan light thing and uh we didn't do lighting <laughs> i don't it was yeah it was a mess as you can see on youtube but um you know that's that's how you start right that's how you mm-hmm. you learn and you build and and it's been a, a growing experience for sure and but it's it's been fun. It's been fun to to learn how to improve, and you're always improving, always learning, and um, changing things, and adding things, and you know that's that's the goal to get better every day. So. Mm-hmm. We well, you look at what you've built now, this room and all the equipment, all the lights and the cameras. I mean, there's 
several cameras now and the the mics. I mean, it's the the whole setup is night and day from from what it was. I want to encourage listeners just from that story alone that you don't have to have everything figured out to try something new. Right. And that is what we all want. As humans, we want control. We want to know that when we try something that it's going to end well. Yeah. When we embark on a new adventure that we're going to do it right Mm -hmm. and that it's going to go smoothly. Sometimes it just doesn't. Sometimes those first couple steps are shaky. Things don't look right. You don't have confidence. Those are the moments, too, where you grow the most because there's there's a humility that comes in learning that you actually aren't an expert on this new thing, and you're not supposed to be. Yeah. Nobody is born an expert. It's no. it, We all have to grow in everything that we do. And so I think if we would allow ourselves, give ourselves grace in understanding that, I'm going to try something new. It might totally flop right away, but I'm going to keep trying until I learn how to do it right. And then I want to see where that takes me. See, when we first started the podcast, you're right. Visually, it didn't look great. The audios sometimes were okay. I mean, we would even have listeners say, hey, I can only hear it in my right ear when I listen to this. (laughs) Or it bounces all over the place and like, you'd go listen to it. It had already been released and you're like, darn it. Like, (laughs) There is so many points of of humility that that we had to take and knowing like this is not as good as so many other podcasts that are out there people we might lose listeners if they think this is where we're going to stay yeah i felt like one one thing too where i guess when you're learning a new thing this is where maybe it's just me but i feel that when you're learning a new skill or a new you know thing it's hard to troubleshoot when things go wrong, right? Because you don't have the skill set or the you don't really understand the whole of what is going on to like, oh, this is what I need to fix or this is what's wrong. Mm-hmm. I felt like that's been a big piece of the of the podcast as well, the audio and the video and the lighting and all that, all that stuff because as soon as something goes wrong, I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like I know how to set <laughs> it up. I know like what I did differently the last time, but – because I'm thinking specifically of one of the episodes we did and something went wrong and we're like, okay, let's just pull out like this one microphone. And so we shared the microphone <laughs> and we were, had a guest. And th- so that was weird. That would, did not sound great. Uh, and then we used uh, the lighting was no lighting. We used just the outside light coming in from the window and we started it when it was light. And then by the time we finished the episode, it was like dark and so you couldn't even see us. <laughs> so our so our audio was bad. And then I was like, well, we should probably think about that next time where don't just rely on the, the, sun. <laughs> the sun if we're going to be podcasting at night. <laughs> uh-huh. So yeah, wrote that in my notes for next time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stuff like that, right? Like you, you just as you go, you learn. You, you, you know, you realize you can't troubleshoot, and you, you think about, you know, what you can can do next time to make it better. So, no one wants to look bad, though. No, no one wants true. that that chance of looking dumb or yeah. being embarrassed. For some of us, it's just not worth it. Yeah, I'm gonna stick to what I know. Even though it is something I'm not super happy to do or I'm not excited about or I don't actually like doing it, but it's what I know. Yeah. And it's safe. And it's what everyone around me expects me to do. Mm -hmm. And then we just stay there. And how many times have we read an article or watched a little video online or, you know, it's somebody that has interviewed people at their deathbed or interviewed people that are like 95 and, and they ask them, what's your one piece of advice that you would give? One of the most common responses is that, that people say that I would have tried more. Yeah. That I wouldn't have cared so much about what other people thought. Mm -hmm. Those are like the two most common things. Mm -hmm. And the younger we are, the more that those things are important. We do care about what other people think. That's so true. I was, I was just thinking, <laughs> like, man, the older I get, like, I love people. 
But I'm getting to the point where I don't care what people think about me. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, whatever, dude. That is your opinion. I could care less. I mean, I love <laughs> you, but whatever. You know? Like, I don't know. But yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. I hear that too. The older yeah. we get, the yeah. less that you, the less that you care. Yeah. And and there's obviously something we're all learning in that. Mm-hmm. We we realize that one by nature people are very self focused and selfish. Yes. We think more about ourselves than we actually understand mm-hmm. because we actually then think that so many people are thinking about us. Yeah. And I like to even remind the kids of this because they're, you know, they're in that. They're teenagers. They're in like, yeah. th- those are some of our most selfish, self- self-absorbed self years, our teen and early right. 20 years, 20, uh, 20 somethings. I know I was incredibly selfish yeah, in those were. years. You were. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, let me tell you. <laughs> but I like to remind the kids like, hey, as much as you might think that that they're getting up in the morning and thinking about you, they're not. Yeah. They're thinking about themselves. Yeah. As much as you think people actually really care about your outfit that much, they don't. It's like when you got that pimple on your chin, right? It's like yeah. you think it's like the size of like your eyeball and you're like and it's not, <laughs> yeah. right? And and you're like so concerned about it and oh, everyone's going to be staring. I was like most people don't even like care, like they don't even see that, right? And even like, if they did, they'd probably need to go then go in the mirror and look at their own face and be like, right. "Well, what's on my face?" Wait, do I? Have we turn everything back to ourselves, so right? True, yeah. We turn everything back to a focus on ourselves, yeah, and true. you know, it's it's really easy for us to be self focused, self centered, and it's. I think, and it was in the last podcast, I said, "How often do you get in the way of yourself?" Mm. And that's one of the reasons. Yeah, we get so self focused and so. You know, we we criticize and analyze ourselves in ways that no one on the planet does, yeah. but yet we think that they do. Mm-hmm. We think in our head that all these people are thinking of us all the time and analyzing and judging us all the time, everything that we do. And it's like, well, it's sorry to break it to you, but it's not true. Mm-hmm. And those moments when people actually do, they are pretty fleeting. Right. And you actually have to approach those things one at a time. And ask why that's happening or have a conversation with that person or even consider, does that even matter what they think? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, does it matter who gets to speak into your life? Who who gets to take up real estate in your mind? Who dictates the kind of mood that you're going to be in for that day? Yeah. I mean, I know I've been guilty of that. You know, someone says something really mean or does something that's hurtful and it I'll let it ruin my whole day. Mm-hmm. And- I have to at some point get get to a place where I'm like, why am I letting this? Yeah. I'm letting this bother me so much. And there is something I can do about it. One, I can go and talk to the person. But two, I can just take a day and, and, and really think about, does this actually matter? In the grand scheme of things, does it matter? Because, you know, as life goes on, you're going to meet more people. You know, all your, your, your group of friends, your community, your circle is very small when you're 10. By the time you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old, you've met a lot of people in your life. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of circles. You have your work friends and maybe your training group or gym friends. You have your family and maybe in-laws and extended family. You have friends from different jobs that you've had, different neighborhoods, like as life goes on, you're like, wow, I've I've rubbed elbows with a lot of people. Yeah. But I think the older we get, going back to what you were saying, you also start to understand like who really matters and gets to speak into your life. It's actually a very small group of people. Yeah. Yep. It's very small. Yeah. So you're 2023. What let me ask you the question you asked me. Mm-hmm. What was the big you can't say the four 200 mile races <laughs> because we all know that was challenging we all get it right and uh what was your biggest challenge well i did touch on the book yeah in in the beginning yeah yeah i i think i was i and I, i'll hold to that one because i don't think anything has affected me physically so much too mm. that affected me physically emotionally and mentally yeah and um, your diet was not great during the uh, <laughs> long hours at the library either. <laughs> I don't think people understand. Like, I, I feel like I turned into a junkie yeah. when I was finishing up that book because, yeah, I had some rough days. It was really the last 
I, I want to say it was the last 60 days of writing it, which was also a part of the lead up of me training for the training. 200s. Yeah, right. So it was really hard because there were just some days that I, I couldn't train. I mm -hmm. would go and write for 10 to 12 hours straight. Yeah. Editing, rewriting, editing, rewriting, editing, rewriting. Eddie would, and I loved um, writing at the library, the local library. Mm -hmm. It's actually the library where I grew up as a little girl. Yeah, I have so cool. many memories there. So it's actually creatively, a, it was a very good place for me to be. It really helped me kind of get into a certain, um, a certain like headspace because the book was about my childhood. Yeah. It's written from a kid's perspective. So right. it's not this, you know, this eloquent, superfluous, beautifully, you know, scripted words like you may expect. It's literally written from a kid's perspective. So it sounds like a kid mm -hmm. talking um, throughout most of the book. I mean, there's definitely portions in there where I talk about races and yeah. relating that back to my childhood. But I needed to be in a place that brought me back to when I was a kid. And so I would go to, sometimes I'd visit certain childhood um, areas around town that reminded me of these stories. Mm. And so some of those days were hard. Yeah. And you would text me or you'd find me on Life 360 and mm -hmm. you'd come in and you would bring me um, an Americano with heavy cream, Yep. which is like my favorite order, really would fill me up. And sometimes that was all I could get in, but then you would ask me if I would want anything to eat and I'd be like, I just want gummy bears. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what? is going on you want caffeine and sugar and nothing else like it was so unhealthy and i realized if i ever write a book again i am coming up with a healthy way to get into a writing setting but i don't i'll never write that book again yeah. i think that was part of it yeah. it was like memoirs are one of the hardest genres to write if i was just writing a book on running it was right. a training book, a fitness book, like a mindset book, like boom, like it would have been a completely different pathway. But this was, there was so much fear and anxiety rolled in into it, mm. but I also knew there was going to be a lot of good that came from it. And yeah. so, yeah, the, the book is it. The book was the hardest the thing. The big one, yeah. And, you know, I look back on it. It's at the top of the charts all the time on yeah. Amazon. It's the top of charts on Audible. Um, in its in its categories, which blows me away. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, we're selling books every single day. We get tagged every single day mm. of people that are reading the book, that are listening to it, and it's just uh, blessed me beyond comprehension. Truly, truly is. It is yeah. one of the greatest goals I'd say of my life. One of the greatest overcomings. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest fears I've overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, I think. We share these big stories of, of racing and the grueling workouts that I do. And there is this picture of me floating around online where, um, you know, Sally's so strong and Sally is, you know, superhuman. And I mean, these are just comments that, mm. that we see all the time. And I want so much for people to understand that um, so much of what I'm able to do out in running, which I love so much, is because of the rough roads that yeah. I've known in my real life. That's the, running 200 is the easy part. You mm. know, the, the, the fact that I'm able to run professionally for the last decade is one of the greatest gifts of my life. That's not hard. Mm. That's not challenging to me. I'll be honest. The Choose Strong Project and running for 200 miles is also to send a message to you that if I can do it, you can too. It is not as hard as people make it out to be. Mm. But there is a very strong trend going along online where people feel like, well, if I'm going to be make a meaningful life for myself, I need to run Leadville. I need to run a 100 miler. I need to do these 200s. No, you don't. That's a that, thing, huh? That's not the hardest thing that you're going to do in life. Yeah. You don't have to run super far and lift really heavy in order to make your life meaningful. Hmm. The most meaningful things you'll do in life involve the people, people. in your life yep. and staying true to who you are. Now, obviously, I love running and racing, and I love testing my body, my physical body. I love sharing the stories along the way. And so I will I will always keep on doing that mm -hmm. for as long as my body lets me. Yeah. I'm going to keep pushing. So I love that. But I never want my message to come off as this is what makes my life full. Mm -hmm. This is who I am and that alone. And if it's not there, then there's no purpose. 
you know, my life is full for so many greater reasons than running. Yeah. And I see running as a gift. And I think that when we are given gifts, when we are, we have talents, I, I believe every person has something that they're good at. And it's, it can fall into so many different categories. It could be artistically, musically, relationally. Um, it could be in the kitchen, the way that you cook, the way that you serve people, the way that you communicate. I mean, there's so many gifts that we be given. And the goal with a gift is that you use it all up. You use every bit of it for good. Mm. You use it to love other people. You use it to connect with other people. You use it to inspire other people. That That's what it's supposed to be used for. It's not meant to parade ourselves. It's not meant to say, hey, guys, look how great I am. And, and I, I fear if I ever come off that way. I don't think I'm so great because I run these 200s. I mean, if anything, you look at these 200s. I mean, the film coming out, I, I say this in the film. I didn't have a single smooth, spectacular performance. Mm -hmm. None of them were. Even winning Moab, every single one was filled with challenges, yeah. was filled with bad decisions that I made that put me in into those setbacks. Yeah. And I had to deal with that. Getting to the finish line was a battle every single time. I still have a lot to learn. And that's the message that I want to share with people. I just am not afraid mm -hmm. to try. I'm not afraid to keep going despite you know, making poor decisions, despite my failures, despite the discomfort. I want to always keep trying. I always want to keep growing. I want to be the best that I can be. Whether or not it aligns with what the world thinks is the best, I know that I can always carve out a life where I am continually growing and learning and and really improving on the things that I need to improve upon. Mm -hmm. And I think every person has the opportunity to do that in so many areas of their life. I know I can always be a better wife. I can always be a better mom and and sister and friend. Like those are areas that I can always improve upon. Yeah. And I think that's what it means to live a real life. If we think that we're supposed to hit a certain age in our life. And at that age, we have everything figured out. We have all our ducks in a row and our, our bank account is overflowing with money. We have no debt and we're the most successful person in our job and we're adored by everyone in our community. I mean, who's the example of that? Hmm. Where in history does that happen? The movies? I don't know. I mean, that's not... Uh, that just isn't a real life. Real life is that you keep growing until you are at the end of your life. Yeah, I want to get to the end of my life knowing that I used up every bit of who I am. And if I do that, if I live a real life in an authentic way, I'm going to get to the finish line pretty beat up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get to the finish line exhausted and tattered, probably crawling. That is what is real. That yeah. is a real life. And that's really how we want to encourage you, our listener, that it is okay that you don't have everything figured out right now. It's okay that you have not succeeded at every single thing that you are trying right now. It's okay that not all of your relationships are just smooth and amazing and that you have this best, you know, the best job ever and, you know, this trophy partner and kids and, um, you know, everything figured out as, as even as for our college kids that are listening, that's just a real life is a life that is full of trying. Mm -hmm. There's going to be failures. There's going to be successes. There's going to be triumphs. There's going to be the most amazing days of your life. And there's going to be some low lows. But I believe that there's always a purpose in moving forward and reaching for something better every day that you get to wake up. Yep. All right, so the challenge for you this past year was the book. What about a <clears throat> highlight? What was the highlight of, of the year for you? That one's hard. There was a lot of great things that happened this year. I mean, one of the highlights, I think you and I share this, is watching Mackenzie choose a school for herself Yeah, and choose from three of some of the best running schools in the nation. Mm. And I think for for gosh i think she was 8 years old when she kind of started to really focus and embark on this journey of running and when we get to be in the front row seat and watch our kids achieve things that they've worked for 
I mean, it, <laughs> all of my achievements this year have have paled yeah. in light of that because that's really the hope of a parent is that they that they always do better than what we've done. Right. That they achieve greater than what we have achieved. That was a massive highlight. Yeah. And I, I'm just so proud of Mackenzie. Yep. Um, and I can say in the same breath too, Isaiah really blew us away this year. Mm. And I think on a parenting level, which Eddie and I, we always say we're not perfect parents, but on a parenting level, we were really blown away by some of the choices that he made that we weren't expecting. Um, one of them was just on a random summer day. He's like, I'm going to go get a job. And he literally just went down yeah. to Huntington Surf and Sport all by himself. And he got a job yep. and picked up a lot of hours. He worked so hard all summer. Mm-hmm. And you and I were just looking at each other and we're like, what? Yeah. I We didn't say anything. <laughs> like yeah. He's like, I want to make my own money. I'm going to go get my own job. That's where I want to work. And even then, I mean, he he refuses to ask us for money. Yeah. I mean, he wants to go out to eat with his friends. We're really used to like, hey, can I have 20 bucks to go out to eat with my friends? It's so expensive now, right? Mm-hmm. And he ne- I can't remember the last time he's asked us for a dime. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I know that's a really minor thing in, in the grand scheme of things, but it's like, wow, that was like really good choices. And then in the middle of cross country season, when he's like, I'm going to go join the cross country team. Yeah. A, a, we like, never what? said anything. We woke up one day and we're like, what? You've never wanted to never. have any connection to running whatsoever. Mm-hmm. You are a ball sports boy and you have made sure that we know that. Mm-hmm. And he joined that team and he did awesome. Yeah. He did. And made some really great friends. And now he's playing lacrosse. And yeah, I think as a parent, we're entering into this season of our kids are becoming more and more independent. Mm-hmm. And Sometimes it's hard for us because we know we're more at the end of the of that season in our life and it goes so fast. Yeah. And we we still look at our kids and we think that they're 4 and 6 sometimes or at least we wish that they were still at that age, but mm-hmm. we are really proud of who they're turning into and um what they're accomplishing in life. So, yeah, those were huge highlights of 2023. Mm-hmm. Um and then I guess the the podcast and the app really took off this year. Mm. And that was very exciting. I think you and I had a few meetings about it where we were just kind of jaws on the table. Yeah. We didn't expect this. Which for our listeners, I, I think this is really cool for you if you are working towards something. Realize that you know, it's easy when you look at what other people are doing to be like, well, of course they got that. They deserve that. And they're, they're set up for that. Mm-hmm. They have the opportunities and the resources and the people around them. Of course, they're going to achieve that. And even to a point where we weigh our value as humans, they're just better than me. Mm. They, that, that, that kind of success or those kind of achievements are made for people like that. Definitely not for me, though. And, and it's easy to put ourselves in a box and kind of stay in, in that box because we think that's what we were meant for. Yeah. And then you kind of think about, wait, who told me I was supposed to be in that box? Mm. Who was it that put me there? Did I put myself there? Was I only operating because that was the expectations of someone else? Or that's just what my family's always done? And I don't even know why they did all that, but like that's just kind of what we do. Mm. What would happen if you stepped out and you did what you wanted to do and what you were passionate about and what you loved and what if you tried that? So I think this year was kind of coming in into that, realizing, wow, like when we first started out, we didn't think that anything that we would be doing would genuinely be so, so successful. Mm-hmm. We were just excited to do it. Yeah. You know, we love people and community, but we we um, didn't know that it would end up being what it is today. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't be here without the community. So we want to thank you, our listeners, for yeah. being a part of it and for encouraging us and for your kindness and support. You know, I look at the Facebook page now and I'm just like, man, it's so incredible. The friendships that are made and the way that people support each other mm-hmm. just on that page is really neat. But going off of what I was saying yesterday, I was like, I'm just... 
so amazed and proud of you, Ed, because you probably took the greatest risk. I didn't. Like, this is just what I've been doing for mm. over 20 years. Like, I'm a coach. I'm a trainer. I'm a runner. I'm an athlete. Like, I have been that for over 20 years. Yeah. So I'm very comfortable here. For me, getting out of my comfort zone is, hey, let's go try a new distance in a race. That's not, like, massive. Like, you literally left a job that you have your master's degree in. You invested so much into becoming an elementary school master teacher. And you walked away from something that was secure, dependable, that supported your whole family to go do something that you knew nothing about mm -hmm. with a hope that maybe it would turn out. Yeah. And I'm just amazed at that because I think that was way harder than what I was doing. That was the highest risk. You took the highest risk, but high risk, high reward. High risk, high reward, yep. Yeah. Yep. What about, I know you're not huge on resolutions, but as you <laughs> move to 2024, mm -hmm. do you have any New Year's resolutions? I know you like to call them like goals and stuff, but what yeah. are, what are uh, I think one of the biggest things is just kicking off this Do the Work campaign. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to talk more about that in the next podcast, but yeah. I want to encourage all of our listeners. This is something that we're actually... It's going to be a community campaign, and we hope that you guys hop on the hashtag. Um, we're going to kind of break down what that looks like, but overall, we're encouraging people to do their work. Do your own work. You don't need explanation. You don't need to, to um, give all these details to everyone. You just show up for yourself every day and do the work, and whether that is you know, five minutes a day or four hours a day, you are choosing to show up and put the work in. And that's what matters. The consistent work is what matters. All the other details, I mean, I can use running as the example here, but this really applies to any goal you're working toward. But, you know, when it comes down to the details of a running goal, you know, whether it's a recovery day or a tempo run or a hill run or a, a long run workout or you're four weeks into a training plan or you're 18 weeks into a training plan or you're building up to a 5K or a half marathon or a 100 mile or a 200 mile, all those details, all those goals and, and specifics, those are precious to you and really precious maybe just to the few people that are there supporting you in that goal. But I think sometimes it's the details and we're sharing all that other stuff where we, be, we become so caught up in then judging ourselves and analyzing ourselves and comparing ourselves. You know, we think, I, I think I'd given the example of like Strava, where sometimes we're afraid to post stuff on Strava because it's not fast enough. I didn't go far enough. It's not mm -hmm. as good as so-and-so. Or you show up to like a running group. Hey, I'm not much of a runner. Like I run at like 12, 13 minute pace. Like I know you run at five, six minute pace. So like, I'm just going to be here in the back and I'm not as much of a runner as you. It's like, wow, what if we just focus on the fact that we all showed up to run? Mm. We're all going to do this same course. It doesn't matter if you've been running for 15 years, five years, or what pace you go or how long it takes you to cover a certain distance. The most important thing is that you show up and you do the work. Do the work every day. No excuses. You don't need to give all the details. You either did it or you didn't. You can either say yes at the end of the day or you say no. And if you need more context to those things, listen to episode 39 and I believe 41, mm -hmm. um, where I really dive in to both of those things. So doing the work. Um. That is going to be the biggest goal of, yeah. of 2024 is encouraging the community in that. And I think that'll bleed out to people who are far outside of the running community. Mm -hmm. There's people that have goals that won't go after them because they just feel like I'm going to look really silly. Mm -hmm. Or my starting point is so low, like I'm so low that I just feel lame even starting at all. I think about this with fitness. You know, here, here's the truth. I started coaching and training people in strength and fitness a long time ago, uh, back in 2007. And I have heard every story under the sun. I have heard every excuse, every reason, every fear, every worry. It's pretty incredible the way that we devalue ourselves based on our physical efforts and capabilities. And when, when someone 
gets out of shape. And they they really then turn in mentally and, and feel really bad about themselves because, man, I just have never been so out of shape. It's It's incredible the way it affects their entire life. And for me as a coach and someone who loves to encourage people and help people see the value in them and realize like, hey, your value is not in the skin that you wear. It's who you are as a person. That That's a value is who you are. And man, it, it, I, I've listened just a lot of heartbreaking conversations where people get to a point where they are so out of shape and according to them, mm-hmm. So far beyond what they used to be, let's say they played a sport in high school or college, that they settle in to who they are today as far as their physical state goes and their health, that they then say, this is just who I am. Mm -hmm. But really deep down, it's fear. It's that I don't want to feel where I really am. I don't want to feel or look dumb. It's just too much. And for some of us, it's just the work feels too hard. Oh, my gosh, the mountain is so massive what I have to climb in order to get back to even a fragment of the health and and fitness that I used to be. And that's another big piece of where do the work comes from. Mm. Do your work. Don't Don't go scrolling on social media and thinking you have to do their work. That you have to look like them and be at their pace and be at the... You have no idea where they came from. You have no idea the mountain they climbed or what they're dealing with on a daily basis. Let them live their life and do their work. You do your work. And if that means that you're spending a solid six months of very uncomfortable workouts and and your workouts are like, okay, I'm going to walk for 10 minutes... And then I'm going to try and like stretch for 10 minutes. Great. Every time you complete your work, you're a tiny bit better than when you started. You're a little bit stronger than when you started. And when you show up every day to do your work, you know what you're doing? You're doing something a lot greater than the physical part. You're training your brain that you can commit to a goal. You're training your brain that, hey, we show up and we work on ourselves because that's a part of our life. That's what we do. We have work to do. And when you feel physically better about yourself, you're a little bit more motivated in other areas in your life. And I think if we busied ourselves so much with our own work, instead of being so obsessed with other people's opinions and what other people are doing, those are things you can't control. So don't worry about trying to control them. Control what you can control. Do your work. And really, this has nothing to do with the love part. I always like to bring that in. This doesn't mean you turn inwardly and be totally selfish and build your whole life just on you, 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 you. Because I feel like that when your work is centered in love, you realize that your good work is going to affect your family. It's going to affect your employees. It's going to affect your community. Because you're going to become a better, stronger version of who you are today. And I'll tell you what, the people in your life need you Mm. whether you believe that or not i like it i like it so um two days the moab film drops how stoked are you to have that released to the world no i can't believe it that's our third third documentary this year i'm very grateful to drew darby and tyler mccain if you guys don't follow them yet on instagram make sure you do today is december 27th Mm. december 29th 2023 Mind Over Miles, the Moab 240 documentary, will drop. And that will be live on my YouTube channel. We kindly ask that you watch it. You um, give it a thumbs up if you think it deserves a thumbs up. And you share it. Encourage other people to watch it. It's a beautiful film. It's very different from Tahoe 200. Um, Tahoe 200 was very like race, hardcore, sp- race specific. This is beautiful mm-hmm. as far as the message that's in there. So we we hang a lot on the crew, the Pacers, mm-hmm. what I learned throughout the entire Grand Slam series. And really it culminates to the last few sentences that I say yeah. in that film and the message that I have been trying to relay this entire time. Mm-hmm. So as you can imagine... This film, although it's based on a running event, is very much about life and something that I believe 
every person can glean from, uh, whether you're a runner or not. So I'm so grateful to know Drew and Tyler, to have them in our life, to have them in our corner, um, creating such beautiful content. And and that we get to work with someone like Drew, who he does all the producing and the editing, um, who's so open to insight and notes and feedback from us because yeah. – um, you know that these films are really hard work, mm-hmm. and there's definitely messages and things that we want to tell. And so it's been really fun to work along alongside him. You know, in that journey. In fact, I think we're getting another rough draft of it today. Yeah. So we've seen one cut of it before audio and visual stuff has been tightened up. Um, but I think this next cut we're going to see is is pretty close to what the final cut's going to be. So, mm-hmm. listeners, we are so grateful to release this content to you. We want you to know that um, when you download my app, it allows us to put out this kind of content because it's, uh, you know, it comes at a a pretty high cost to put out full-blown documentaries Mm -hmm. and hire a crew. And um, so we want to thank you for downloading my app. The link is in my my caption, also in the bio on all of my social media um, outlets. So please um, check that out. Same with the book. Um, both supporting the book and the app supports all the work that we do. And if you get our app for the annual um, option, it comes out to basically $8 a month. So you can support our work and what we do for um, $8 a month. Um, and we want to thank you in advance if you are already in there. Thank you so much. Um, it really does mean a lot to us. And in 2024, our goal is to put out um, way more content than we did this year. So you're going to see weekly YouTube edits on my channel. Um, we're going to be putting out more films Um and doing a lot of other really cool things. I know one of the things that Eddie and I have been chatting about are live events. So there's a lot of things in the work and uh, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you for your support. Is it, it really does mean, mean a lot to us. Yeah. Yeah. I agree 100% with what you just said. And (laughs) uh, I got nothing to add to that. (laughs) Well, Ed, this has been an, an, Awesome conversation. Real coffee talk at the table. A real chat, yeah. Yep. A real chat. Raw as always. Raw as always and uh, in my PJs, you know. And in our PJs. <laughs> Friends, we are so thrilled that you are here with us. We want you to know that your goals in your life matter. There's great purpose for you. The fact that you got to wake up today is a wonderful gift. That means there's work to be done. And there's uh, dreams to dream. And we hope that if no one has told you yet today that you know that you are loved and you are equipped for everything that is happening in your life right now, you are equipped for it. So keep choosing strong. Keep living a life that is true to who you are. Remember that Eddie and I are rooting for you always. And so we hope that you keep choosing strong in all that you do. 